Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. A, a sort of crisis like this has just shown how it's important to have diversification in even in your profession that you know you should be platform agnostic and you should just work as an actor. You don't know where people are going to watch you tomorrow. Yeah, we don't really talk about it. It's more me yelling, don't post that picture of them or, you know, she's pinching all my pictures. I think I should do it on social media. Hi, Seth. Hello. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to Film Companion. Well, no, not I, I, I have some time. <laughs> <laughs> I always have time for Film Companion. You know, Seth, um, there hasn't been much to smile about in the last couple of weeks, but one of the moments that really made me laugh was, was that moment when um, Navika Kumar asked if Temur could come to the camera and wave at the viewers of her show and you said well Temur is on the party and I mean it just struck me it doesn't blow your mind that we're in the middle of a global crisis and we're still obsessing with your son well you know I in fact at the time when that happened genuinely did go looking for him and normally I wouldn't involve him in an interview obviously of mine um, but I just thought given the circumstances, everyone could do with a bit of cheering up and people seem to be happy when they see him. She certainly gave me the impression that, you know, she was just looking for a happy face really. And I did go looking for him and he genuinely was on the, in the loo. And uh, otherwise I would have brought him on just to, you know, give a kiss to the audience and say, have a, you know, hang in there guys kind of vibe. Yeah. Something that we wouldn't normally do. So yeah. it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't something that I felt was intrusive. I mean, if she did that normally, which she probably wouldn't, yeah. um, you'd say, okay, listen, you know, let's keep this between you and me. But given those circumstances, I think it was fine to involve Tim. No, and really he is, he is a source of joy. He's, he's a source of joy for us, for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, he's at that perfect age, Anupama, where he's just happy that we're both around. He's not, you know, looking to play football. I mean, he is, but he's happy just to be with us and we find ways to entertain him and yeah. he's, he's he's really a silver not a silver lining he's a massive source of joy during this time yeah you know Seth you you compared in an interview this this whole time to a 19th century voyage yeah. um, and you said we're all cut off from each other which I thought was really it's it's a lovely sort of comparison uh, but you also said that you have to be careful that you don't get cabin fever sailors used to get cabin fever so what what are you doing to make sure you don't have cabin fever well again learning from those uh people um in the sense that you know it's common knowledge apparently that uh, you know you need to have some kind of a healthy routine and you need to kind of balance your day uh so that it's you know you're not just lying around or you're not you know letting your thoughts get the better of you so really a bit of exercise to start the day really keeps things in perspective. I mean, you feel so much more positive. You start looking at the brighter side. And then you have to mix things up. And I must say, I'm really lucky that I've got Karina, who um, is also really uh, has the a Voyager's kind of heart because she's the one who's constantly suggesting, you know, let's change our clothes <laughs> uh, tonight and let's have, you know, dinner on this side of the house or let's cook this or make me that drink or, um, you know, uh, it comes up with different variations of, of the theme. And, uh, and that's the thing, really. So if we make a timetable, and if we sort of, I mean, we don't have to stick to it pretty uh, rigidly, but there's a part where, you know, you play a bit of music or try and improve the mind, maybe read something that you wouldn't read normally. I, I heard something nice that, that uh, you know, happiness and joy is to be found in the places where it was always to be found, which is in, you know, great books or in a, nice play to read or uh, you know really good piece of music to listen to and things like that so there's recreation there's constructive stuff there's time with the child um, so balancing it like this and then you go off you know to a corner of the flat and do something on your own so you get a bit of quiet time as well and if you work it out like that um, you know you, you it's really not that bad um, of course you know there's always that scare that maybe you fall ill and that'll change things. I mean, it's not really a holiday. This is like trying to stay healthy to help the system. So there's that worry. And then there's, you know, obviously sympathy for 
people who you constantly hear about all over the world and obviously particularly in India where uh, you know they're really having a tough time yeah. um, and what this will do to the economy and how we we'll work ourselves out. Sorry your question was what am I doing? So I'm doing various things. I, I still, I'm trying to read things that I wouldn't have read. I'm trying to um, you know exercise and take some courses online. I'm trying to you know play bits on the guitar that I would always wanted to learn but just never had the time or the proper inclination to sit down and do. So there are various, various things. Um, and I'm really happy I own the paintings I do. So I stare at them for a while and, you know, that, that sort of thing. I'm, I'm very internal. I live a lot uh, in my own head and mind. So, and so does my wife. And, and so this is not really something um, that's completely derailed us at all. Uh, I'm not much of a social person in Bombay. Uh, unfortunately, has not been a city where I like to go out and walk anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, nothing much has changed except, like I'm saying, the uncertainty, the uncertainty of knowing. Like, if you tell me it's 60 days, then I can work with 60 days, you know. But if I don't know, then yeah. it makes you a little uneasy. But, Seth, what do you think is the role of the artist at a time like this? You know, in this country especially, we have such a... Um, unique relationship with our actors, you know, I mean, you guys are worshipped. Uh, should you be out there sort of encouraging people to hang in there, stay positive, do the right thing? Or is it time to lie low because there's just larger things at play? Well, you know, actors, I don't know what the role is. I think, you know, uh, things will change and have changed temporarily or hopefully not forever. Or I don't know how long. Things have changed. And now we're, we're supposed to find pleasure uh, and contribution, I suppose, in different places to what, what it used to be. Uh, I think an actor will be called upon for the same sort of things. There'll be, you know, public messages. I mean, media is still functioning in a big way. So, you know, you probably find uh, yourself being approached by some of those people to say, can you help spread this message or can you be part of this advertising campaign or whatever. Um, the role, I'm not sure. I think... I think it's pretty much the same as it's always been, which will be to be some sort of a symbol for, you know, awareness and entertainment. Um, uh, I think people will enjoy watching stuff. It's just a question of how we shoot it in the future. You know, um, I mean, cinema halls might, might not be the, the most happening place to be right now. The, or, sorry, it sounds a bit facetious. I'm saying it might be a dangerous place uh, to yeah. be. And I don't think people will, will be doing that for a while. But home entertainment, computers and Netflix and Amazon and all this presumably will be fantastic. At least I'm consuming more of that than ever. Yeah. Um, and I imagine a scenario where all of us will have to do some kind of health check and then we'll quarantine a set somehow and then all go there and kind of work in an atmosphere of complete fear where, you know, we hope we don't catch something that kills us. And, and slowly come back to, I don't know about normal, but I can imagine actors having work. I, I, I don't feel that this is a non-essential. I think that's the thing. What you, it boils down to whether what you do is actually essential or whether it's just a marketing thing where you've made people feel that this is an important thing. And I think actors are important. Um, and I think entertainment is very important, at least cultural entertainment. Uh, so I think we'll always have a job, which is a relief because at a time like this, there must be people who are out of work and Absolutely. you don't know whether they'll come back to work. Yeah. Uh, it must be horrifying yeah. at that point. Uh, but I think actors will be all right uh, because there's different um, exhibiting um, platforms, you know, there's like televisions at home or the internet is the safest place at the moment, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You know, you said, um, Seth, that you now want to be a more commercial actor. What, what, in what way? No, within the, the kind of choices, rather than doing the films, some of these films, you know, I think I have a sense now. I think we're always looking, or the industry is also looking, and directors are looking for which way the industry is supposed to go. And yeah. the audience kind of decides. So you do a Rangoon because it seems to make sense, you know, like a grand love story. I mean, of course, there's always the thing of it not being executed as... Uh, sort of successfully as it might have been on paper. There's always that. But just the idea of Rangoon seemed cinematic. The idea of Lal Kaptan seemed cinematic, you know. But when you see something like, you kind of get a sense that, no, I think audiences are not into that kind of thing. 
I think they're more into this kind of thing, like a booth police out of what I've been offered. Yeah. It's a very funny commercial kind of script. Which I laughed a lot at it, it frightened me. And I, I thought, hey, I think this is what um, people in our country would like. And I think you have to be a little aware of what people go to the theater for and what they kind of want. Again, it's difficult because we're so, this umbrella of, uh, you know, Bollywood has so many different kinds of minds under yeah. it. You know, and and yeah. we're so different in our country, which is one of the great things about it and why people shouldn't try and homogenize us, you know, because we're, we're really, really different types of people. I mean, there's 20, like the directors once worked with us, are almost like from different countries when it comes to their, their minds. So we're still trying, we're kind of trying to figure out which is what's going to work. And every few years you feel, well, maybe it's time to try something new. Sure. Um, uh, but, but generally speaking, commercial is things with songs, things with comedy that, and also everything's dialed up to the point where you want people to cry. You want people to feel the film, you know, like they say, it's filmy expression that feel it in your stomach, you know, not in your heart. It's like going to be a little gut wrenching kind of stuff that's happening. Yeah. Um, um, Right. Can you please shut this door? Okay. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. Right. What? Seth, but, but tell me, the, one of the things I've heard in the last couple of weeks is that a lot of actors and directors are now um, looking very actively at the streaming space because the truth is nobody knows when theaters will reopen. Um, and you were, of course, the first to go there with Sacred Games. Did long-form storytelling um, change you in any way fundamentally as an actor? Just having to kind of stay interested in a character for much longer than a feature film? Um, no, I've always been, I just thought the long-form, I mean, we were so excited when Netflix offered that to us and, you know, Vikram Motwani took it so seriously because he's aware of world cinema and he knew the kind of things that we're going to be compared to. And the fact that everybody stepped up and did their part from the set designers to the actors and all these things. Um, it's just the best cinematic experience I've had in a very long time or perhaps ever. So I've never really seen the difference in terms of um, long form, short form in that sense, except that perhaps the audience is more international and more, um, you know, uh, wanting good cinema rather than masala or whatever that means. Um, You're right. you, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. So that thing of when you're shot, you know, in good light and people are taking that time, it was one of the few jobs I'd seen where I watched it myself later on in kind of, uh, in Cape Town actually. And uh, I put it on late at night and I was really happy just thinking, wow, this thing pulls you in. And it's like um, the first uh, season was really, really well directed, my, my part and all of it. But so I'm really happy that's here to stay because it's really good cinema. And Netflix is incredible because they've changed the whole game. And there is a difference in my head still between Netflix and Amazon. And I think Amazon's like an extension of, of Hindi film and, and, and Hindi television, which means it's a little more commercial and a little more accessible and it's probably more appealing to a pan-India situation. Um, but Netflix has got a different kind of quality and storytelling in my head. Um, and, and in reality, I think. So, uh, you know, they, Netflix wanted to change the way things are done because one is always associated the smaller screen with smaller ideas and less money and, and the whole, you know, stigma that comes with that whole idea in, in, in India to an extent. And I mean this with the greatest respect, no offense to anyone. Um, it's just that television to become, you know, a GEC thing or to become, you know, mass, mass appealing um, needed to be accessible. So uh, it wasn't that exciting to people who want to be uh, particularly clever. So, um, but Netflix said that, no, we'll bring entertainment to the small screen that's probably be better than most movies. And that was a really interesting revolutionary challenge to kind of challenge the status quo of how things are. Um, and it's a sort of crisis like this has just shown how it's important to have diversification in, even in your profession that, you know, you should be platform agnostic and you should just work as an actor. You don't know where people are going to watch you tomorrow. Absolutely. Absolutely.
Listen, I read that you Google yourself every day. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it happens. You just check the news. There's a rhythm I've gotten into. Okay, honestly, the answer to that is like probably yeah a lot because, and I shouldn't, but it's a habit. I just go and I look at the news and I, my phone arrives in the morning and I have a couple of, you know, I eat a banana and I start, you know, a couple of sips of coffee. Um, and I look at the, I look at all the messages I've got. If I've woken up late, there's more than if I've woken up early. Um, and I, you know, read the news and I look at stuff and then suddenly I'll see what's, what I've said recently or what's happening in my world. And the easiest way to do that is to, kind of, you know, type in Saif Ali Khan. And it's gotten a little boring, honestly, because I think there's so much out there that the, the actual Google search doesn't really come up with anything um, uh, particularly interesting, at least not these days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a bit quiet out there. It's, it's normally just, you know, also that's where you get to read the interviews. Like if I've done an interview with you or if I've done an interview with somebody else or some GQ interview has come out, whatever. Right. That's the time to read it. Because I've never read, read it before. So I just wanted to see what it sounds like, what it looks like. But it is a bit, I suppose it is a bit vain. Um, it'd be, I'd, I'd probably be happier if I didn't do it. I keep promising to not do it and then I end up doing it. It's a habit. Well, maybe it's because you're not on social media. Otherwise, they talk directly to you. Well, perhaps. I don't really thought about it. But it is certainly, it's a habit. And sometimes I'm happier when I don't do it. Because then I really have. But it's not possible to really cut off, you know, even if you're not on social media, somebody other tells you. Yeah. So, Seth, I wanted to ask you about, about, I was just thinking about Love Ajkal and the sort of um, how, how brutal the response to it was. And, um, you know, Sarah got, came under a lot of criticism. Uh, the film came under a lot of criticism. Is this something that you could hold her hand through? She is very young and this is the first time. Uh, or is this something every actor just has to deal with but, on their own? You know, it's both. I mean, I did uh, message her and asked her if she's all right. And I'd, of course, love to hold her hand through. And it's a, it's a romantic and a nice fatherly notion. But I don't think it's really needed. I mean, I think she's quite tough and she's smart and she gets it. Um, and I told her, I mean, you have to go through this. And... Uh, and she realized that and she hasn't really talked about it or, or um, I, mean, I don't think I really want to talk to my mother either about, you know, something that went wrong, even though parents want to help and they're there. And of yeah. course I'm there. And, and, um, but it's not, it's really something that you have to go through on your own. Um, and it's also not the end of the world, you know, really, at least that's what I think. And I'm sure she thinks like that as well, because we quickly move on to what's next, you know. And there's enough things to keep you distracted or keep you, I mean, it sounds a little cold, um, but I, I think actors tend to look forward to the next one after that mourning period. And that mourning period is part of, you know, life and death and highs and lows are what make us and, and what, and, you know, I mean, there are so many cliches, like how you get up is what defines you and whatever, but mm. um, that's, it's a fact that, uh, you know, there are tough times and, you know, you, people love you and you think you're on top of the world and then suddenly, you know, you sense that this is quite fragile and it might change. Uh, and that, it's a good to have that reality check anyway. There's the, you don't want to be the kind of movie star who's n never really seen much success and then, you know, can't walk when it finally happens. You know? And then it's completely shaken up because the entire equation is, has been rattled and there are a few people like that also. Of course. Um, yeah. It's something I think that everyone goes through. And I think the great Rekhaji told me once about, I don't know why we were talking about it. We were doing a film and she said, you know, if you look like nothing happened, then you're an idiot because then you're faking it. And people say, okay, this guy's really shaken up because he's trying to act really calm. Right. Really nonchalant about it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, okay. And if you're too shaken up, then that's also, you know, it means you've got no stomach for, uh, you know, loss or defeat, which you need to have. Um, and, and that's really what it is. And in time, if you can look back, hopefully, and you look back at your failures and you say, you know, there were slightly glorious failures. Like, I, I think I look back at Agent Finn, oh, there's a glorious failure now. I mean, we, we really produced that film properly and we really tried and we did something so right. And we did, unfortunately, more things wrong, perhaps. But if you're going to get it wrong, that's the way to get it wrong. And I, I got it wrong the bad way as well, which just means, 
you know, rubbish all the way through, which, but <laughs> the good thing about that is nobody remembers. Um, so, yeah, you know, love Ajkal. I mean, yeah, when somebody lose some, it's really dismissed in one sentence, you know, nice try or bad luck or all these easy things. It doesn't really bear too much dwelling on, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it is what it is and you move on. And then you've got to understand maybe why you did it. You must have liked something or maybe you did it because you liked someone. I don't know, you know, you liked the director, you liked the producer. So then you realize that this is why I did it. Maybe next time I should look at that. Or Honestly, I mean, I feel it's just a question of stars aligning in a way or not just luck, but, you know, many things have to fall in place correctly to make a successful film. Yeah. Not much has to go wrong for it to go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, chances are you're going to have a few of those. Um, but that's the point. I mean, we keep working through it, you know. Um, and anyway, I mean, of course, another cliche is that success without failure doesn't taste as sweet or whatever. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. so, Seth, tell me, you know, Karina's, of course, finally on, on Instagram and really doing a masterful job, if I can say so. Uh, you know, there's some lovely images of, of you and Temur gardening yeah. and you and her, and him, you know, in these bathrobes. And I was just wondering, do you guys talk about what can be posted and what can't? You know, what is public, what is private? Yeah, yeah, we don't really talk about it. It's more me yelling, don't post that picture of Temur. Or, you know, she's pinching all my pictures. I think I should do it on social media. She's taking you should. All... Yeah, I'm, I'm like a supporter, a silent supporter on this uh, thing. But uh, no, I think she's quite, she's very uh, correct in her own head. I often say to her, she's like, can I give this picture out? I have this amazing video of Temur cleaning dawn knobs. I have this super hit in India, but she won't let me publish it. She says she might at some point. He's, he's cleaning the windows. I say, what are you doing? He says, cleaning. <laughs> it's very sweet. Um, so yeah, I think she's very conscious not to manipulate his stardom to suit her own enterprise. <laughs> right. she's, she's, very, she's very instinctively never done that and, and won't let me do it. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she normally, I mean, if I'm sitting around and reading something, looking like a boring old fart with a book. She'll ask me, she'll like, I, shall I publish this? And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Rather it was a picture of me like swimming or something with a six pack, but no. So most pictures of us relaxing or being on downtime um, would require me to be slightly brave to share because they, they won't be very glamorous of me, you know? Yeah. So that's, but it's fine. It's fine. None of this matters anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Seth, uh, when uh, the lockdown started, you were shooting for Bunty and Bubbly uh, yeah. too, just a little before that. You know, what's it like to be back at Yashraj where your career started? Um, you know, to be back working with Rani with whom you made so many films. W what did that feel like? Well, I mean, they're two different things. Um, it, it just felt nice to build... I mean, to kind of reconnect with Adi again. That was nice because, you know, I don't know whether it's a human tendency, if there's a little, if the equations are imbalanced or if there's something slightly wrong. Um, you know, like we'd had a, a couple of disagreements in the past and um, I think he was a little disappointed in my attitude towards certain things and we hadn't worked together in a very long time. And this just meant that, you know, the, it's all at peace again and everything's fine. And that is the most important aspect of this because doing a, the, and also, also, also there's the, you know, really nice angle of working with a producer that kind of knows what they're doing because I've produced films and I try and produce films. Um, it's really a relief to work with someone who has all the headache of choosing the right music and figuring out how to shoot it and release it and uh, just do your work as an actor and work with good producers. That's a really good feeling. Um, and so there is that sense. And I mean, I have a SMS from Aditya saying, welcome back home and all that means a lot to me. Um, and working with Rani uh, is like we never left really. 
I, I think I've changed quite a lot. I think she um, finds me perhaps a little less annoying. Um, and I, I have more respect for her uh, than I probably did in my, you know, 30s, where I was just, you know, wanting to go home, or I don't know, it was quite a lazy Why were you annoying? Thing. Well, uh, I don't know, it's an energy thing. I think um, it was funny because she's very grounded and, and serious. And I, I think I was like, a, um, I mean, we're very, very different people. And one of the reasons we uh, have worked as an interesting pair on screen is because we're fundamentally very different people, which means also on set, uh, we might not agree with each other's worldviews, you know, uh, because we're, we're just different people. But today, you know, there's much I admire about her. I mean, you know, the fact that we're both parents at around the same time with kids at the same age. And um, I, I think I have changed a lot. And I was a little more impatient and younger and in a rush uh, then, um, which must somewhere have been uh, you know, I mean, she looked up more to Amir Khan as like, you know, sensible and mature actor and all that. So I, I don't know if I um, was particularly impressive in that sense in those days, even though we did a lot of work together. Yeah, yeah. The film would look interesting. Right. Uh, but, uh, but the dynamics on set were not always, you know, uh, um, I mean, they were what they were. Um, I mean, no, nobody, I mean, it was always nice. We got along with each other. It's just that now, um, I, I just, I, I think I'm just a more, I think I've understood more in life. So I'm just a little calmer and I, I have more respect generally um, for what's going on. You know, you told this story on when you were on Karina's show that when you first started dating Karina, um, and it was the first time you had dated a, a working actor, uh, Rani actually advised you to sort of uh, approach it uh, uh, as though you were pro uh, dating another man and wh what did that mean? I don't know I think what she meant by that was you know don't think of it in a chauvinistic kind of way that you know I'm man this is the girl and um, you know you should be like this and I should be like that if you just think of it as two people who are working uh, and need to be respected equally which has never really been an issue with me I think you know I, I'm quite a of course a believer in equal relationships um, or unequal to the point where, you know, we get the shorter end of the stick. But um, so that's, yeah, we were shooting Thora Pyar, Thora Magic in LA. And I just started going out with Karina and we were talking about it. And she said, oh, I really love that girl. I'm really fond of her. And I'm glad you're, you know, settling. And in fact, Rani's seen me through, you know, turbulent times. She's seen me um, in a couple of relationships. Um, and it's quite funny, actually, because we haven't really talked about it. We've touched on it recently. Um, because like I said, we're getting along differently now because yeah. I probably wouldn't have discussed it with her then. Um, but she's like, I've seen you through all this time and this is your most kind of settled. But at that earlier, she said, look, if you want to be happy, just think of an actor, a female actor that you're going out with as, you know, um, a complete equal, I think is what she meant. Like two of you, if your work's important to you, it's important to her as well. So, you know, two working people in the same house with the same priorities. Yeah. That's how you have to look at yeah. it. And, and you also talked about, uh, in another interview, about how Adi was holding up lines for you to read during some sort of audition for Parampara and you couldn't get the line right. Yeah, it was terrible. And I don't think they, were, they could find a, that fourth lead or that chap in the movie. Um, and it was really kind of him to give me a screen test, but I couldn't remember the lines. I was really nervous. But that's how long I've known Adi. He was yeah. holding that piece of paper from the first time I ever looked at a kind of a big, big video camera. And it was a really simple line. I had to say, Dev Das Ke Aftar. And I said, Dev Saab Ke Aulad. <laughs> and, you know, it was just a disaster. I used to smoke 10 cigarettes and walk around the set with an assistant director, just mugging lines, trying to learn them. It's just really funny. Um, yeah. That's amazing. That. That's amazing. What, what, what a long, wonderful trip, huh? Yeah, it's been great, you know, and it's been really interesting and so much has changed uh, and so much has gotten better. And we've moved with it because it, it needed to be. And, um, you know, there was some sad times in the 90s. It was just uh, some 
odd films being shot in odd places. Um, but I think everyone's in a good, good place now. I mean, you know, generally speaking. Yeah. Seth, last question. You said you're reading War and Peace. How far have you got? I'm on page 220. Not bad. I've only got a thousand left. <laughs> But it's a start. And I tell you, it's not really that difficult, you know. War and Peace is not a difficult read. He, he's, Tolstoy is really easy. He, and I also, I, it's the period I really love, like it's Napoleonic and it's, you know, it's, it's strangely enough, it's about war <laughs> and peace. So the peace parts are incredible. They're like Dallas. It's all about, you know, who's having a relationship with who and the illegitimate sons being given all the money and my God, when did that happen? So it's got all that wonderful drama and Tolstoy observes life very clearly like you know Rembrandt or like you know Shakespeare's heavy this is really just casual just incredible like he says I just read a line where he says this woman is talking to him the hostess at a party and she tells the hero she says you know at my age you can't have these evenings for too long and she gives a gap as women do after commenting on the age for the man to say, no, no, you're not that, you know, you're not that old at all. You know, and he doesn't get the hint. So he's just a keen observer of, of how lovely. How life. And then the war parts are fab. It's all about, you know, cavalry charges and, you know, really frightening. So it's a, basically it's an easy read, but I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm committed to it. Excellent. Listen, thank you so much. And it's always just such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you as well. And we speak again soon. We will. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't right. worry. Thank you. Right. Thanks Thank you. so much.